Can you believe it? The time when social security payments are higher than wages is actually coming. Shanghai recently announced a new policy that increases the social security base. In just four years, it soared by 70%, with the minimum going from 4,279 yuan to 7,310 yuan. A lot of people think that with this increase in the social security base, they'll get more pension in the future since they're paying more now. But what they don't realize is that China's social security system is pay-as-you-go. The social security you pay now is directly used to fund the pensions of current retirees. It's not saved or invested like in Western countries. When you get old and need your pension, it'll depend on the younger generation of that time paying into the system. But, with China having the second lowest birth rate in the world, an aging population is inevitable. Do you really think there will be enough young people to fund your pension when you're old? I'm considering stopping my pension contributions. Since the end of last year, it's been almost a year since I started paying. I always thought it was essential, that you can't go without it. But just a few days ago, a new policy came out saying retirement age is now 65. I'm 40 this year, which means I'd have to contribute for another 25 years. In Hebei, where I am, it's over 10,000 yuan a year, and that's if the rates don't go up. If I live to 80, I'd only get 15 years of pension, but I'd have to contribute for 25 years. I never realized until I did the math. It's shocking. That's over 300,000 yuan in total. Is it even worth it to keep contributing? Some people online are saying it's better to buy gold bars, one each year, which might be more beneficial than a pension. Due to a declining working population, an aging population, economic slowdown, and rising youth unemployment rates, many have ceased contributing to Social Security. Under the governance of the Chinese Communist Party, Pension funds are facing a shortfall as expenses outpace income. Various provinces and cities have consequently raised the minimum contribution base for employees' basic pension insurance. On December 18, 2023, Shenzhen's Human Resources and Social Security Bureau, the Finance Bureau, and the State Taxation Administration's Local Bureau jointly issued a notice. Effective from January 1 to June 30, 2024, the minimum contribution base for employees' basic pension insurance in the city was raised to 40% of the province's average wage in 2022, which is 3,523 yuan per month. Starting July 1, 2024, Shenzhen's contribution base will further increase to the lowest standard of Guangdong province during the same period, which is 60% of Guangdong's average wage in 2023. The new calculation for average wage includes all companies within the urban area, including private sector positions, not just those in state-owned enterprises and public institutions as previously calculated. Shenzhen's Human Resources and Social Security Bureau explains that the notice adjusts the minimum contribution base for pension insurance. If an insured person's current contribution wage is higher than the adjusted base, their expenditure will not increase. Conversely, if their current wage is below the new base, their contribution will rise. The amount of the increase varies depending on each person's wage relative to the new base. Under Shenzhen's old standard, the minimum contribution base for pensions in 2023 was 2,360 yuan, compared to the new standard of 3,523 yuan for the first half of 2024. This is an increase of 49%. If contributions are made at the minimum base of Guangdong province, 60%, the amount would be 5,284 yuan. According to new regulations, the contribution base and wage standards set in 2022 imply that after July 2024, the minimum pension insurance payment in Shenzhen will have risen by at least 120%. Tsai Xin reports that as the contribution base continues to rise, if the increase outpaces wage growth, more low-income individuals and casually employed people will fall below the minimum standard, leading to an excessive financial burden. In China, the minimum contribution base for pension insurance is adjusted annually. Theoretically, adjustments should match the previous year's average wage increase. However, in practice, the rise in the Social Security contribution base often exceeds wage growth significantly. Some citizens have expressed dissatisfaction with the new regulations, as their wages have not increased, but Social Security contributions have, effectively reducing their take-home pay.
Ex-users have commented that local governments under the Chinese Communist Party are running out of funds, with tax revenue and income from land sales drastically declining. Even Shenzhen is short on funds, let alone other regions, which may resort to various charges and fines to exploit the populace. This signals hard times ahead. Others believe the strategy is to collect more through Shenzhen and redistribute funds, estimating that many places across the nation are struggling to sustain their social security funds. Another viewpoint suggests simply opting out of purchasing pension insurance, as there is little chance of reaping the benefits later on. Mr. Zheng, a small business owner in Longgang district of Shenzhen, states that businesses contribute a large portion of social security payments, with enterprises typically covering 60 to 80 percent, with the state's pension funds suffering significant deficits and health care funds also lacking. He says the government is forcing the raise of corporate contribution rate. Mr. Zheng notes that his company contributes 80% to employees' social security, with the staff paying only 20%. Such practices could lead to the collapse of small and medium-sized enterprises, thinning their profits. This goes beyond simply being able to pay workers. The very existence of the company is in jeopardy. An article published by Tencent's public account Ma Jiangbo's Trend Research indicates that Beijing's pension contribution base is 6,326 yuan, while Shanghai stands at 7,310 yuan. The universal increase in social security contribution bases not only burdens employees but hits small business owners hardest. The article points out that population aging is an unstoppable trend, and ordinary workers and small to medium-sized businesses are forced to bear more of the social costs of aging. With the government's finances stretched thin, the only alternatives seem to be raising taxes and printing money, with the common people ultimately bearing the brunt. Financial commentator Tsai Shenkun suggests that Guangdong and Shenzhen, being among China's most economically developed regions, are being targeted by the CCP authorities to increase social security levies to compensate for pension shortfalls in the Northeast and Northwest. Securities Times reports that in 2022, 21 provinces in China were required to contribute over 200 billion yuan to offset pension deficits in other provinces. Guangdong contributed the most, with 88.5 billion yuan, while the three northeastern provinces, Liaoning, Heilongjiang, and Jilin, were the largest beneficiaries, receiving 82.2 billion, 82 billion, and 23.8 billion yuan, respectively. Additionally, China's social security is deeply in deficit. A September 2023 report from the National Council for Social Security Fund shows that in 2022, the Chinese social security fund suffered substantial stock market losses, totaling a loss of 138 billion yuan, with an investment return rate of negative 5%. Chinese media report that the social security fund has been involved in investment activities, with a significant portion in stocks but not limited to them. At the end of 2022, the Social Security Fund had a total asset of 2.9 trillion yuan, one-third of which was directly invested, while two-thirds were managed by entrusted managers. The media articles point out that since its establishment in 2000, the Social Security Fund has been involved in stock trading for 23 years, with three occurrences of losses. The first was in 2008 during the American subprime mortgage crisis, that triggered a global financial tsunami, severely affecting stock and bond markets, including China's social security fund. The second loss occurred in 2018 amidst complex international trade and significant capital market fluctuations, resulting in a 2.3% loss for the Chinese social security fund. The third loss was in 2022, a year when the overall stock market dropped by 21%, and the bond market declined by 16%, leading to a 5% loss for the Social Security Fund. The articles suggest that domestic and international financial environments significantly affect the profitability of the Social Security Fund. In 2022, factors such as the Russo-Ukrainian conflict and the pandemic led to decreased demand, skyrocketing prices, and weakened economic expectations, culminating in losses for the Social Security Fund. Moreover, in 2022, China's real estate market entered a downturn, with new construction area and sales area declining by 39% and 24%, respectively. 
the implosion of leading private real estate firms led to a gloomy bond market, causing the Social Security Fund to lose money alongside the overall downturn. Following the announcement of losses within the Social Security Fund, many are concerned about the safety of their pensions. In fact, China's pension system has been in crisis for some time. As early as March 8, 2011, CPPCC member Zhang Yunling indicated during the two sessions that the pension shortfall had reached 1.6 trillion yuan, necessitating unconventional methods to accelerate the accumulation of the National Social Security Fund. Zhang Yunling stated that China has the largest elderly population and the fastest aging rate in the world. By 2030, there are expected to be 400 to 450 million Chinese over 60 years old, assuming an annual expense of at least 80,000 yuan per person, plus medical costs, the figure is enormous. Considering the current sources of funding, government allocations, state-owned enterprise shares, lottery revenues, social insurance, and personal accounts, the pension funds are far from sufficient. This is posing to be China's greatest challenge. Zhou Xiaochuan, former governor of the People's Bank of China, remarked at a forum at the end of February 2023 that by the end of 2021, various types of pension funds in China totaled 11.8 trillion yuan, accounting for about 10% of China's GDP. On November 20, 2020, the China Insurance Industry Association released the China Pension Third Pillar Research Report, predicting a pension gap of 8 to 10 trillion yuan within 5 to 10 years, a figure that is expected to grow over time. The report points to 40 years of planned birth policies as the cause for the reduction in the young and middle-aged population, leading to an aging population and a decrease in the number of people contributing to pension insurance. Another report, China Pension Actuarial Report 2019 to 2050, released by the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences World Social Security Research Center in 2019, predicts that over the next 30 years, China's system dependency ratio will double. In 2019, the total surplus was 106 billion yuan, but by 2028, the surplus is expected to turn negative for the first time, with a deficit of 118 billion yuan. The report also notes that the cumulative surplus of the Urban Workers' Basic Pension Insurance Fund is expected to peak at around 7 trillion yuan by 2027, before beginning to decline, with the possibility of depleting the cumulative surplus by 2035. The report states that the basic pension insurance system faces the challenge of expenditures surpassing income in the medium to long term, and without including fiscal subsidies, pension funds began to see net outflows as early as 2019. According to the report, the pay pressure of basic pensions has been rising since 2019, with nearly two contributors supporting one retiree. By around 2050, it's projected that nearly one contributor will need to support one retiree. Zheng Shuguang, independent self-media commentator, also agrees that China's pension funds will hit zero at a critical point due to the country's unique phenomenon of 40-plus years of the one-child policy, leading to simultaneous aging and a decrease in birth rates. Under these circumstances, the pension shortfall is expected to accelerate. Zheng Shu Guang explains that the pension system was designed for the working youth to support the current retired elderly. The one-child policy equates to a lack of investment in human capital by the state and families alike, directing funds towards production and consumption instead. As a result, the GDP looks favorable, but in the future, there will be no one to contribute to the pension fund, leading to a significant deficit that the state will have to cover. Studies from the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences have highlighted a grave issue with the pension system, where contributions fail to meet outgoing payments. This shortfall has resulted in depleted personal accounts for workers who have not yet retired and has effectively created hidden liabilities in pension rights, presenting a looming crisis of insufficient funds to fulfill pension payments. Indeed, According to information from the Ministry of Finance, the pension fund was already in deficit by 156 billion yuan in 2014, escalating to a deficit of 312 billion yuan by 2015. Self-media cold eye finance indicates that while aging is the main cause of China's pension shortfall, it is not the sole reason. Many factors stem from systemic issues within the Communist Party's regime. When China's pension system was established, 
state-owned enterprises aim to shift pension responsibilities to the central government without adhering to international standards. This insular approach has led to opaque operations and corruption among officials misappropriating pension funds, exacerbating the deficit. Ah Chiang, a veteran Chinese media personality, has stated that 70% of provinces in China are already spending more on pensions than they collect. Following the burst of China's real estate bubble and a sharp decline in local government fiscal revenues, compounded by three years of the pandemic and the diversion of substantial health insurance funds to construct makeshift hospitals, many localities are reducing medical benefits. Under such fiscal constraints, it is difficult for local governments to continue providing services to the elderly or to build nursing homes. Ah Chiang further points out that pension paid in many parts of China are very low, citing rural Sichuan as an example where elderly individuals receive only 120 yuan per month. He said, This is insufficient even for living expenses, let alone for elderly care. A video has surfaced showing a 65-year-old elderly individual from rural Hubei working as a sanitation worker in Beijing. Why are you still working in your 60s? Are you receiving a pension now? What can we do if we don't have the means not to work? Let's not even talk about the pension. It's just over 200 yuan a month, barely enough to buy a pack of cigarettes. According to data from the 7th National Census conducted by the CCP in 2020, the population aged 60 and above in China stands at 264 million, accounting for 18.7% of the total population, with those 65 and older comprising 190 million, or 13.5%. Compared to 2010, the proportion of the population aged 60 and above has increased by 5.4 percentage points, indicating a further deepening of the population aging problem. Zhou Xiaojing, a Chinese sociologist based in the United States, has categorized the elderly in China into two groups, central cadres within the Communist Party and general workers outside the party. He notes that the retirement life of Communist Party members and cadres is comfortable and privileged, but the vast majority of the populace, especially the elderly in rural areas, are left with no other prospect but to wait for death. Joe comments that during the one-child policy era, the CCP had once claimed, one child is best, the government will provide for your retirement. By 2005, this shifted to, retirement should not rely solely on the government, and by 2012 it changed again to, delaying retirement is good, provide for your own retirement. In 2018, the message was even more stark. Supporting the elderly is a duty. Pushing it onto the government is shameful. Joe criticizes. The Communist Party deceived the common people with promises of state-provided retirement care, only to later abandon them. The government, which he calls an organized fraud group, has let down the Chinese populace. He asserts that the government has not delivered, with the slogan, government-provided retirement, ending up as an empty promise. In recent years, there has been an increasing number of people in mainland China who are reluctant to contribute to Social Security or who have opted out. The Shanghai Human Resources and Social Security Bureau disclosed that as of the first half of 2023, the number of participants in the basic pension insurance for enterprise employees was 15 million, a decrease of over 70,000 from the end of 2022. Liu Jiwei, former Minister of Finance, stated in a public lecture in May 2021 that the existing social pension insurance operation model and management system are questionable in their sustainability. The social pension insurance model lacks sufficient positive incentives, and the stratified management has led to a low rate of pension contributions, with actual collections amounting to less than 80% of the amount due. 